Hey guys, Vladimir here, and I just finished mounting the soundbar on my wall. And as you can see, I have these 3D printed uh, brackets here holding it up. And the reason I'm doing this video is because this is where 3D printing really shines, right? When you have a part that is very customized to fit into another part. In this case, this soundbar has a very interesting shape. It's like a teardrop shape. Uh, so the best way to really go about this was just to design my own bracket and print it. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did that in Fusion 360 and it's, it's, it's quite easy to do. Uh, but the story behind this soundbar is it was sitting in my living room basically just collecting dust that uh, we never really used it. Uh, which is a shame because it's got a really great sound to it. Uh, as you can see here's a, a subwoofer it comes with. And once I realized that I could actually um, paired this uh, through Bluetooth with my phone, um, I decided to go ahead and mount it and just have it in this room for streaming music. It sure beats what I have been using, which is this little uh, mini jam box speaker. The approach I took on this design was to take a picture of the site profile of the soundbar, bring it into Fusion 360, and sketching around it to ensure a perfect fit. I went ahead and modeled the mounting holes and then mirrored a copy to get uh, two brackets. Hard to see here, but I printed this with black PLA 20% infill and then just did some uh, pre drilling and went ahead and screwed in the brackets. I then mounted the soundbar, which looks great and it fit like a glove and sounds amazing. Okay, here are the brackets we're going to design. As you can see, there's a left and a right. And we'll go ahead and start a new design. So let's go to File, New Design. And we'll begin by bringing in the picture I took of the side profile of the uh, speaker. So we'll go to Insert and down to attached canvas so click on that uh, we'll select our image so i'm going to double click here and we will choose this image here and next i need to select my plane so the face here and i'm going to design this on the zx plane so that blue red we'll click on that and bring that opacity down a bit and make sure this play through is checked and we'll click ok and then we'll go to a front view and the first thing we need to do is calibrate this. So I'm going to expand canvas here on the left hand side of the browser. Right click on my image there and then go to calibrate. And I measured this um, with some calipers so I know that the distance between uh, the left edge here and I'll just go all the way to the right. Um, that I measured at 87 millimeters so I'm just going to enter 87 and since my unit is in millimeters as my default unit, I can just enter 87 and hit enter. And it'll go ahead and rescale for me. Um, so now I'm going to double click on the center scroll wheel and it's going to zoom back out. So now I know that this is the right size. I can go ahead and start a sketch. So let's go to um, create sketch here or you can just go to sketch, create sketch and we'll choose our ZX plane. Uh, again and we'll just sketch right on top of this. So I'm gonna keep it simple and we're just gonna draw some lines and arcs um, around this. So we'll start with L for line and I'll start here and I'm just gonna slightly overbuild because I know my printer and I have uh, a good idea of what's gonna be a good you know nice snug fit. So I'm not gonna go right on the line but just slightly o over it. So. Um, I'm going to start with a line about here and then I'm going to click and uh, hold left click and that's going to give me an arc um, and I can come back and actually tweak this later but for now I'll just do that and then bring that other line down here and then I'll hit escape and go to sketch and this time I'm going to grab the three point arc so uh, we'll do a three point arc and I'll go from here to my point here and then give this a bulge. Uh, okay, so now I can actually grab this and start adjusting. So I can bring this in, or I could grab these endpoints and um, adjust them out. Uh, one thing I want to do, uh, well, you see I have that tangency there. I want this uh, um, arc to be tangent with this line here. So let's grab. Uh, a tangent constraint. So I'm going to click on the white space to deselect whatever I had selected. Click on the tangent constraint, select this arc, and then select this line. And that's going to give me a tangent. So let's adjust this. 
You can see as I adjust this, it also moves these points here, so we can tweak those individually. Um, just enough where this is just over, just a little bit um, over the line. So go ahead and just play with it um, to get it right. Um, next, I can go ahead um, with this side, I can you know bring this out or in, or to lock it in place, I can actually hit D for dimension and give this a radius. So let's say I want like a radius of 40, I can enter that, and that's always gonna lock the radius in, and I can then adjust it. And now I can also go back in and do some fillets here, so to, to round this corner. So I'm gonna go to sketch and go down to fillet, and click on these two edges between the arc and the line, and then I can adjust this fillet right there. I'm gonna give that a five millimeter fillet. I'm gonna right click and go to repeat fillet and do the same thing here, and also do a five millimeter fillet. Um, so that looks pretty good. I'm happy uh, with how um, this follows my, my canvas. So I'm gonna get rid of canvas now, because or I'm gonna undo the, uncheck the little light bulb here so I don't see it anymore. And let's go ahead and apply an offset to this. So I'm gonna go to sketch offset uh, and we're gonna do an offset of five millimeters. So we'll enter five and hit enter. Okay, when I mount this, I actually, I want it to be facing down a little bit. So I'm gonna take this whole sketch and, uh, and move it or uh, rotate it. So um, you can see how my selection is a little wonky here. So I'm gonna go to select go to window selection instead of the freeform and I'm gonna draw a box around the whole thing and then I'm just gonna right click and go to move and I can put this uh, pivot I can do it right in the middle here click the check mark and I'm gonna take everything and just rotate it I'm gonna do a negative 15 degree so it's going down um, and then click OK alright so next I'm gonna draw a line um, I'm just gonna draw a vertical line all the way down. Um, I'm just gonna, I forget what I actually used last time, so I'm just gonna um, draw a line and, and, uh, for now and see, see where that goes. So I want this line to be a tangent to this arc here, so I'm gonna grab my tangent constraint, click on the line, click to this arc. You know, now I can go and adjust this. Um, you know, and I should say, you know, sometimes when you're designing stuff, you want to be very precise with your tolerances. Um, but other times, if you're working off a drawing or something, you're just messing around, seeing what works. Um, and being precise is, you know, may not be the way to go because you just kind of want to play around and see see what works. And that was kind of the case as I approached this. So I can, you know, drag this up or down to see. Have an idea of, of what just looks right to me. Um, so I'm gonna take this line and I, now I want to arc it um, over here to this outside uh, offset that I made. So let's grab our uh, three-point arc and I'll just grab it here and I can snap it to the midpoint here and just give it a, a bulge. Um, do the same thing here and maybe the midpoint there give it a bulge that just that looks right here nice little curve and I'm gonna take this line and I want to offset it so let's go to uh, sketch offset and select this line notice I select everything here now I don't want that I just want that line so what we can do is go to uh, uncheck chain selection so I'm gonna redo that selection so I'm gonna click on the X here and now that I've unchecked chain selection, I can just click on this line, it'll select just that. And I'm gonna give this an offset of five millimeters and then I'll hit L4 line and just connect these lines here. And you can modify this, you know, so I can bring this, uh, you know, change this arc. And if you wanna change, for example, this, notice that you can't and you start moving things um, around because you've got a constraint there so I just shifted a few things so I'm gonna hit undo and what I can do is actually like if I want to move that point be careful here here's um, actually a good tip that gets a lot of uh, beginners see that little constraint that's not gonna let me move this point so but I can always go and choose that triangle that means that 
this as a midpoint constraint because I constrained that arc over there. I can always hit the lead, and once I hit the lead, I can then have the freedom to move this arc and, and put it where I want. You know, and then notice I can constrain it again, or I can bring it in a bit, um, and then I can also adjust this out. And you know, do you can do the same thing here. Notice how things start shifting. Um, so let's hit undo again. And one other tip you may want to do, and when things get out of hand here, all right. So I move things way too much, and <laughs> things are getting crazy here. So uh, I'm gonna let it finish calculating, and then um, just go back and undo. Okay. So uh, I'll show you something else. Sometimes, if for example, let's say. I don't whatever I do I don't want it to affect this part because this is sort of a bracket that I'm making to connect it to the wall but this has to be precise for me right I I've designed this and it matches my canvas and I, I don't want this move you can always go into your sketch palette and just say fix you see how that turned green now whatever I do with these um, arcs you know it'll may move this line here because I haven't set a dimension to that but it's not going to let this part move so um, the fix constraint is a very useful tool uh, to take advantage of uh, when you want to prevent other stuff from, from breaking you know and you don't have them uh, all fully constrained uh, you know with, with dimensions so we can even set a dimension um, to this line here let's say uh, actually that's already constrained so we can, oh, let's delete that. Uh, but I do notice like this line moves up and down. So let's um, set this dimension. Um, yeah, 145 is fine. And but I can still should be able to move it up or down. And so I don't want to do that. So I can also dimension this from my midpoint here um, and set that. Now that's locked into place and I can't move it. Okay, so now that I have all the profiles that I need, I'm going to click on Stop Sketch, E4 Extrude, select this, 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 and this. And I'm going to go for a symmetrical extrusion. So I'm going to change this from one side and the direction to symmetric. Uh, I know the whole length I want it to be 22 millimeters so I'm gonna change it from half length to whole length here and enter 22 and hit enter and I can if I click on this line here I can see that that's 22 millimeters okay now that I have um, my extrusion here I have my solid I need some holes here to mount it so what I'm going to do is go to construct do an offset plane from this uh, back face here. Let me just bring it in to, so I can draw it from the front and I can reference. So I'm gonna move that plane in a bit, click OK, and then go to Create Sketch and choose that plane I just created to sketch. I'm gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna make this one um, four millimeters, actually we'll do five. Um, this is going to be dependent on the screws you're using, so I'm just going to make it a little bigger than the uh, diameter of the screws, so 5 millimeter. And I'm going to go ahead and want this constraint to the midpoint. So let's draw a line from here straight up. I'll select it, uh, make it a construction line. Make sure you get that midpoint constraint there. And then I'm going to choose my vertical slash horizontal constraint. Select my circle and go ahead and select the edge of this line and that's going to center it. Now I can dimension this from the top. Uh, say I want it to be 25 millimeters. That looks good. Okay, now I need to make sort of uh, another hole so that um, this can be uh, counterboard so my um, the head of my screw can actually be sunk into this. So what I'll do is let's go back to a front view. I'll hit C for a circle, just draw another circle. This one's going to be 9 millimeters and hit enter. I'll hit stop sketch and extrude the first hole all the way through so I'm gonna follow that all the way through um, and in fact I'm gonna choose for distance I'm just gonna go all that way if I ever change the thickness of this this will always go all the way through Click OK uh, bring back that sketch you'll notice sometimes it'll disappear on you so I'm gonna bring it back and then choose that outer circle and I'm gonna go to a side view here and I just need to go in far enough 
that that uh, so the screw can be inset there um, and that looks good so I'm gonna click OK and let's get rid of that sketch all right so now I've got one mounting hole there I need the same thing on the bottom and I want it to uh, be basically in a similar location so let's go ahead and mirror that and to create a mirror I'm gonna need to uh, have a mirroring plane so let's go ahead and, and do a, a mid plane so I'll choose mid plane and if I choose this bottom face and this top face it'll create a plane right in the middle between those two and next I can just go to uh, create go down to mirror and I'm gonna choose features from the pattern type and I can just choose those features for my timeline so I'm gonna choose these two hole extrusions that I did my mirror plane is gonna be the plane I just created so I'll select that and click OK and there is my mounting hole so let's let's compare that to this one yeah it looks pretty similar okay so now that I did that what I want to do is create some stops here so if I go to my other drawing so that um, when I mount the uh, the sound bar it'll it won't be able to slide back and forth so you see out here I created this little um, inset here um, or just a little extrusion here to prevent it sort of a stop so let's go and do that and the way I did that was uh, to create a sketch on this surface here and choose uh, offset so we'll go to um, sketch and go down to offset here and we're gonna just click actually now we're gonna want our chain selection so let's click on that and then It'll select this entire profile and we'll go in I'll just do two millimeters in. click OK stop sketch uh, let's bring that sketch back on turn it on so you want the parent and then the sketch 3 here E4 extrude and I'm gonna select this profile along with this profile and go out um, let's see we'll do uh, five millimeters low thick so we'll just do like two millimeters I think should be enough and I'm gonna go ahead and just do a fillet on this so F4 fillet and we'll come out uh, three millimeters looks good and okay and that, so that's a good stop there and that works okay so that's everything we need let me just make sure I didn't forget anything um, that looks fine um, so we actually have to create a mirror of this I can't just create two or print two of these um, because you know one has to be the mirror of it on the other side to be able to hold the bar in place so to create a mirror of this we're just gonna go ahead and let's do another uh, construction plane we'll do an offset plane I'm gonna click on this face and just drag it to the middle it's it's saying um, construction is not turned on so I'm gonna click here too so I can see it and click OK so let's expand construction plane I don't need to see that second one I just need to see that last one I just made uh, now I can go to create mirror and for pattern type I'm gonna go to bodies select this body and then my mirror plane is going to be my plane I just created and then I'll click OK and get rid of that plane so that went ahead and created a mirrored copy of this and to distinguish it because you know I can easily see myself printing the same one twice um, what I did was I'll hit A for appearance and I said uh, so what I did was went down to um, just did plastics and then chose red for the right that way it'd be easy to remember and then um, Lello for the left so we got a right and a left that way when I want to print this uh, I can do you know make 3d print if I need to print the uh, left I'll just click I know it's the yellow one and send it to my printer okay so that's uh, that's how I went about designing these um, and then printed them out and mounted my soundbar if you have any questions on this design just leave it in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe also if you're looking to learn more about using fusion 360 especially for 3d printing make sure to check out my website desktopmakes.com where i have a whole range of design courses all right guys take care